All right, thanks for watching. And today I'm going to prove the bolzano weierstrass theorem in RK, uh, except someone pointed out Bolzano isn't Italian at all. He's Czech. So let's check this out. And remember what the Bolzano, I guess I should say, bolzano weierstrass theorem says. It just says that every bounded sequence has a convergent subsequence. So first, let me define what bounded means. So in this case, we say a sequence in RK is bounded if essentially each component is bounded. So if there is capital M such that uh, for all N, we have that the jth component is bounded. So xnj is less than or equal to m, and that's for all j, from 1 up to k. In other words, thinking of this in terms of a triangle, essentially all that this says is that each leg of the triangle is less than or equal to m. It's less than or equal to m. And in fact, you can show that bounded sequences must be in a box, but that's not why we're here for. Uh, we're here to prove the bolzano weierstrass theorem. So a theorem, again, bolzano weierstrass namely, every bounded sequence in RK has a convergent subsequence. Uh, every bounded sequence in RK has a convergence of sequence. So kind of same idea as before. Um, Here's a one-dimensional picture, but like think of it in, in higher dimensions. Namely, if you have a sequence xn that is bounded, so if you want it squeezed in a box, that's xn, then it turns out it must have a convergent subsequence. So there's some uh, subset or express train that actually converges to some capital X. And here's the cool thing, uh, it's again a proof by laziness, because we know the bolzano weierstrass theorem is true for R, so let's just adapt it uh, for each component in some sense. All right, so proof. So let xn be a bounded sequence. in RK, but then what does that mean? It means its component is bounded. So in particular, the first component is bounded. So then, so since XN is bounded, okay, uh, we get, okay, um, with the definition with J equals one, we get that, that there is a constant m such that x n1 is less than or equal to m for all n. But here's the thing. So this is a real sequence, so a sequence of a real number, not a fake one, okay? It's a real number sequence. So it's a sequence in R that is bounded and therefore, we can just apply the bolzano weierstrass in our... Um, so since then, if one hence, uh, x1n is a bounded sequence in R, I know it's checked, but I really want to say it. The Bolzano-Weierstrass theorem. So by Bolzano-Weierstrass, 
and there is a convergent subsequence. And I'm not going to write x1 and k because it'll get very confusing soon. So there's a subsequence of uh, x1n that converges to some x1. consider again the first component. So the sequence x1n has some components like that and it, even though it might not always converge, maybe it's a bit more dramatic like this. Okay. So even though this sequence may not converge, we know that there's a convergent subsequence. So it converges to x1. Now, here's the thing. So the problem is we want each component to converge, and we don't know if the index is the same for each component. But that's not a big problem, because consider not x2n, but x2 of that subsequence. So this thing. I don't want to write nk because k is already the last component, but let's do it anyway. Uh, so consider this subsequence, x2 nk, but the thing is, then, this is itself a subsequence, it's itself a sequence in R. So, now consider... x2 nk. Here's the thing. We know that x2 n is bounded. So since x2 n is bounded by assumption, we also have x2 nk is bounded. So what can we conclude? There's another subsequence, and unfortunately we have to use this, x, x2 nkl, so another express express string that converges to x2. So there is is a subsequence, a sub-subsequence. Um, uh, x2 in nkl, so an express express string that converges to x2, to some x2. But then here's the thing. So, we know that the whole express train x1 um, nk converges, so... Um, in particular, the express express train. So if you take x1 nkl, that also converges. So in particular, what do we have? If you consider again, not x1 nk, so not that subsequence, but you take the sub subsequence, also converges to x1. And we need this to really have the same index, because otherwise the indices might be uh, kind of um, uh, disjoint in some sense. But then, if you consider the first two components, x1 nkl and an x2 nkl, that converges to x1 x2. So the first two components converge to what we want, and then basically you just continue like this. So you continue this at most k times. So then continuing this, this again has to stop after a finite number of times at most k times. 
So you just take express, express, express trains, we eventually find find a subsequence of the whole thing. So we here we got the first two components to converge, but if you do it at k times, then we actually get all k components that converge. So we find a subsequence of x n such that such that each component converges to uh, the corresponding component to sum, if you want, uh, uh, xj in R, and then if uh, you let x be the whole thing, all the limits, x1, x2, up to xk, that whole subsequence. of uh, x n converges to x. And again, if you want, if you want to be very technical, you can just do an inductive proof in this sense. But we don't even need this because it's just finite number of times. So really repeat the same proof. Finite number of times, and therefore we are done. We found a subsequence of xn that actually converges to some um, number in Rn, Rk, and then we're done. All right, and this is pretty much everything for Rk, but um, we'll talk more generalities of metric spaces next time. All right, thank you.